This Dear NZ presentation is all about how to find and prevent mastitis on your farm. And let's face it, mastitis is a pain. It costs us time, it costs us money, and actually there's a lot of satisfaction in having a low bulk milk somatic cell count and knowing you're sending really good quality milk to the factory. Mastitis is a challenge for all dairy farmers. You may think you've got too much mastitis in your herd, or you may be thinking, hey, I haven't got a problem. But either way, in this presentation, we're gonna look at how can I monitor what's going on and how can I take some action to prevent new cases of, of mastitis. There are two types of mastitis. The first is environmental, and that's when we've got bugs that live in the cow muck, and if these end up getting splattered up onto the cow's teats, then we've got a chance of getting infection. The second type of mastitis is cow to cow spread. If we've got an infected cow, then the bugs from her go into the liner. And so when I take the cups off her, and if I move those cups onto another cow, then I'm taking the bugs with me. So the bugs that were in the teeth of that cow now end up in the liner and get transferred onto the surface or onto the teats of the, of the other cow. And in fact, all the work shows that an infected cow can spread bugs for about the next five cows that those cups go on. To reduce mastitis, we need to break the cycle of cows becoming infected. So we're gonna focus on two areas. First, how do we find existing infections? And secondly, how do we prevent new infections from occurring? Okay, so let's start by finding mastitis. We say mastitis is clinical if we've got changes in the cow, in her udder, or in the milk. So the best way to find mastitis is to strip the cow. So I'm just gonna strip some milk from this quarter and see if we've got some changes. So I can see in this milk I've got some clots and I've got very watery looking milk, so that's a clinical case. We say mastitis is subclinical if the cow's quarter is infected but we can't see any changes in the milk. And if that's the case then we need to use another test and the best one I find is this one called the paddle test or the RMT test. What this test does is it actually measures the amount of white blood cells in the milk. So the stronger the reaction, the higher the level of infection in the cow. So if we get a positive reaction on, on the paddle test, we know we've got a subclinical infection. What we need to do then is we need to mark that cow and we need to check her over the next few days for clinical mastitis. It's also a great idea if we can have, get that cow being milked last so she's not in spreading infection to other cows. So now we're going to look at how to do the RMT test. First thing, make sure you've got gloves on and you've got a nice clean paddle. So I'm going to go around the cow and I'm going to discard a little bit of milk out of each quarter. And then I want to strip three or four good strips of milk into the corresponding chambers of my paddle. Put plenty in, that's the main thing. Okay, so now I've got plenty of milk there. I need to even it up by just tipping the paddle up so now I've got an equal amount of milk in all four chambers. The next thing then is to, to add the reagent. And I do that by, in this one, just squeeze the little bottle. And I want to put in about the same amount of reagent as there is milk. So that, that way, it's, the test is going to be even for all four, four chambers. The most important thing I find is the next step, and that's how do we actually do the test, because a little sh bit of a shake doesn't work. What we've got to do is we've got to do a big, slow swirl like this. So what I like to do is I like to use my whole arm. So use my whole arm like that, and I want to slowly count to 10. So one, two, three, it's quite a long time. That allows the reagent to mix with the milk, and then we get the reaction. And I can see here, having counted to 10, that uh, this one here is quite thick and gooey. So if I just swirl like that, see how easy it is to see? And now I know that there's a subclinical infection in that quarter. So once I've done the test, I know there's an infection there, I tip the stuff out, and the last thing I need to do is give the paddle a good rinse before I go on to the next cow. Okay, so let's test your knowledge. Have a look at this paddle here, and you tell me which of these quarters you think is subclinically infected. I'll just swirl it around so you can see it. And remember, you're looking for the obvious, which one looks gooier than the others. So did you choose number two, this one here? If you did, you're spot on. Now let's look at how to prevent mastitis. Mastitis is a result of bugs getting onto the teat, and then they've got to get up through the teat canal to cause infection. So we're going to focus on two areas. We need to look at, hey, what's happening on the skin? Is the skin dry or not? And then we're going to look at the teat ends, because if we've got cows with cracked teat ends, that's a place for those bugs to grow, and they're much more likely to cause infection. 
Okay, so assessing the cows, teats in your herd is a great way to work out what potential problems and take action. All you need is some gloves, a head torch and a notebook. What we do is we just, first of all, set up our notebook. So I'm going to be looking at two things. I'm going to be looking at the teat skin and the teat ends. So I just put a couple of columns in my notebook. So I've got a page for each. On this page I'm going to put teat skin. And on this side I'm going to put teat ends. Under teat skin I'm going to label them. One side are the teats supple. On the other side are the teats dry. And for the teat ends, are the end of the teats smooth or are they rough? And that's all we need. So now we're going to go, we're going to wait to, once the cows have finished milking, we can get in there and we can have a look at them and we can start doing the scoring. So let's go. So now we're going to score some teats. And I think the most important thing is to wear a head torch. It amazes me how many times farmers say, hey, there's nothing wrong with the teats on my cows, but we'll put a head torch on and we can just see so much more. So let's get started. Okay, so now we're going to score some teats and we do that at the cow level. So I'm looking at all four teats of the cow and picking on what's the worst thing that I can see. So starting off with the teat skin, I can see those teats, look, they're quite dry and when I feel them, they, they really do feel dry as well. So all four of them. So I'm going to mark you down as dry for the teat skin. Then I've got to turn the teats over. And I'm looking at what's the worst teat I can see. So when I turn this one over, I can see straight away, hey, I've actually got some scabs on there. So there's, there's a rough teat end there. That one's rough. And looking at the front ones, that one's OK. And the teat end's quite smooth and healthy there. But because I've got two rough teat ends there, I'm going to mark it down as rough. Now I want to test your knowledge. Have a look at the teats in these following pictures and you decide which ones do you think are dry and which ones do you think are nice and soft and supple. So have a look. Great, if you chose number one as being the dry teat, you're spot on. You can see it's a lot drier than number two, which is really supple and nice and healthy. Now look at the ends of these teats and you decide which one do you think is rough and which is nice and smooth on the end. So have a look now. Great, if you chose number two as being the rough one, you're spot on. You can see how that's scab and, and rough on the surface, whereas the number one, that's looking pretty good. So now we've done our scoring, let's think at the herd level. I like to score 50 cows, because that makes it so much easier to do the calculations. If we do a 50 cows, then we just double it, and that gives us a percentage of what's happening in our herd. So the two things we've looked at, first of all, is the teat skin. So if the teat skin, when I calculate it to put it together, if the teat skin is greater than 10% of the teats are dry, then we've got to take some action. With the teat ends, if we've got more than 20% of the teats that are rough, then again, we've got to do something about it. If the number of dry teats in our herd is above our 10% trigger point, then we need to really focus on the teat spray. The first thing to look at is, well, what's happening on the teats themselves? If the teats are really dirty, then the teat spray just won't get onto the surface of them. So we may need to wash those teats so that we're improving that teat skin condition and allowing our teat spray to get on there and work. Next we have to look at the teat spray coverage. The teat spray is just so important because that's what kills the bugs that end up on the teats. So what we need to do is make sure we get teat spray right around the barrels of the teats. If your cows are standing in, like in this shed, we can see the teats from the side or from the back. That's a really good way to cover them. So what I do is I can spray the front teats from in front like that, and then from behind I can do like that and get a real good coverage. So that way I know the teat spray has gone right around the teat barrels to kill those bugs. The best way to t check the teat spray coverage is to do the paper towel test, and it's really easy. All we need is a paper towel. Just wrap it around the teat like that, all the way around and then open it up. And if I've done a good job, I should see a big solid block of teat spray. If I've missed part of the teat, then there'll be a big gap. And I know, hey, I haven't got the teat spray coverage as good as it should be. So if the coverage is good, the next thing we need to look at is the teat spray mix. What's going on to the teats? Have I got enough emollient in there? Because the emollient is a really important part that's going to improve the teat condition. So I need to check what I'm putting in compared to the manufacturer's recipe. And also, have I got a mix? Is there a mix on the wall so everyone knows exactly what has to go into the teat spray? If the level of teat end damage is above the 20% trigger point, then we need to consider the cow, the people, 
and the milking machine. First, let's look at the cow. Dry teats are more likely to crack around the teat end, so if the number of dry teats in our herd are above the 10% trigger point, then this needs to be addressed. Next we have to look at the potential for over milking. If the cups stay on too long after milk flow stops, then what happens is the teat stretch and that's when we can start to get teat damage. So when I look at this cow I can see, well we're down to a dribble in the bowl and what that means is that those teats are stretching and more prone to teat damage. So ideally these cups should be off to reduce that risk. A great tip in a herringbone shed is to look down the row and look at the bowls. If all the bowls are dry, then we're getting over milking and there's a risk of teat damage. We might have to review our milking technique if that's the case. In a rotary shed, we might have to look at the cup remover settings because maybe they're not quite right. Now it's time to test your knowledge. Have a look at this video and you decide when you think these cups should come off the cow. You're looking to see when does the milk get down to a dribble in the bowl and that's the time to take the cups off. Finally we need to think about the milking machine factors that may increase the risk of TDN damage. Things we might look at are the vacuum level, the liners or the pulsation settings and we, if we think we've got a problem with those then we need to get some professional advice. In this presentation, we've learned all about how to find new infections and how to monitor what's going on and prevent new infections in your herd. But it really comes down to the whole team being involved. The key things I really want you guys to do is first of all, look for mastitis. Strip the cows and do the RMT testing to, to know which cows you're dealing with. Secondly, we need to keep scoring the cows. Do those assessments we've talked about and do them once a month so you're keeping a good watch of what's happening in my herd and what's happening over time. And then what's going on in the shed? The two key things, effective teat spraying is absolutely critical for mastitis control. And the other thing, over milking. Is that happening and is that a risk for mastitis? So those are the key things to take away. And if you need more information, go to dairynz.co.nz.